Hey friends, so as promised, we now have our stretch library. Um, this is all from a seated position first and foremost, so our seated stretches. Uh, we have a lot of stretches we can do and a couple of guidelines before we get into stretching. One, we never strain. Two, we never, once we feel pain, if, sorry, let me rephrase it, if we feel pain, we back off. So no strain, no pain, no pinching. So if something feels pinched, back off again and maybe ease more into it, okay? We listen to our bodies. And then the last one is breathe. No holding your breath. Breathe through stretch. And some rules of thumb as far as how to stretch. Before an exercise, make your stretches dynamic if you're gonna do exercises before moving, before being warmed up. And again, dynamic means moving. So if you're doing a stretch while your body is cold, make sure it is a moving stretch. You don't hold the position for a long time. Our, hold, our stretches that we do hold are our, or our static stretches. Um, those ones we do after our body is warm. So let's get into our stretches. The first one is a quad and hip flexor stretch. This one, we have to have a chair that doesn't have a side. We can't have sides on this. We're gonna just scoot to the side. So we're gonna be just occupying half the chair. Make sure you hold on. We're gonna let the one leg drop. It's gonna drop to where, actually let me turn to the side again so you can see my leg, to where the foot is behind you. You're lifting your chest and this right here, your hip flexor area, it consists of a few muscles that help flex the hip, hence we call it the hip flexor. You'll feel a stretch here and you'll feel a stretch through your quad. Probably this is one of the most important stretches you can do because oftentimes these are contracted muscles when we're in a seated position throughout the day. So this is great. Just step it back. Now, of course, you're gonna to want to do both sides. So that is your hip and your stretch. Now, hamstring. I love the feel of this. I'm gonna again go to the side so you can see, but again, I'm going, you would go forward, okay? So we're gonna lengthen one leg. The toe is going to be lifted. Hands on thighs, so we're sitting toward the front of our chair. We're simply gonna bring belly toward the thigh. Our spine is long, our toe is lifted, and you'll feel a stretch behind that leg. So nice, so nice. And you'll do it to the other side as well. All right, see how my back is pretty straight? I'm not rounding it. I'm lifting my chest and I'm bringing literally my belly button down, but keeping, oops, my chest lifted. That's gonna help you have a nice long spine. And it's gonna help you get the most out of your stretch. And you're gonna get some bonus points with hip stretching as well and lower back stretching. All right, adductor. The adductor is similar to the hamstring, except for the hamstring, you're straight out. The adductor, you're to the side. So one knee is bent, one leg is straight, and we still drop directly between the legs, straight forward. This is gonna get a stretch in this inner thigh, and that is so important. And then we come back and we do the other side. Now, a couple of suggestions with stretching in addition to the ones I've already shared. Don't overthink it. Just go to what feels nice. It's a nice thing to stretch. It should feel good. Now with the adductor stretch, this is fall prevention. Having long lengthened adductors will help that when you're standing and if you need to quickly step to the side to get your balance, those muscles are there for you. They're long, they're gonna get you out that leg out quickly, that is super important to have that flexibility that you can do that. All right, with that being said, we're now gonna talk about a spinal lateral stretch. Now this is very similar to our side crunch. We're just gonna let this out, our body drop to the side, but we're not gonna be thinking about full length. We're just gonna let ourselves hang to one side. This is a spinal lateral stretch. You're stretching the one side of the body. If you get the hand up here, even better. If you can reach up, even better. 
All those are options. You don't have to reach if your shoulder is acting funny. Again, no pain, no strain, no pinching, just good feels with whatever option you choose. So you'll feel that whole lateral side stretch. Now staying in that stretch a little bit longer, just and thinking more about release, just really does open up that whole side body. Oh, that feels great. Oh. How in the exercise library. And spinal extension and flexion. It is this. We're gonna just round the spine and then we're gonna lift up. But we're not gonna think so much about that cat and cow. We're gonna have a little bit more intention. This one we're just gonna let go. We're just gonna round the back, which is not hard for most of us. And then now we're gonna look up at the sky. So spinal flexion, letting the spine flex. Spinal extension, extending the spine as long as you can. That is a nice relaxing exercise. Don't overthink it. Just listen to your body, round the back, extend. I can't say enough about a hip hinge. Hip mobility, such a good thing. So what we're gonna do here is hands on thighs, knees are bent. We're gonna keep the chest nice and proud like I talked about in the past. And then we're gonna drop the belly toward the thighs. But your knees are open, so you're gonna kind of drop the belly between the thighs. Let me turn to the side so you can see my nice, my straight back. My um, lower back is gonna feel a release. My hips are gonna feel good. And then I come right back up. Chin is off the neck, okay? That's your hip hinge. Now, I jumped over a couple. We've got a seated twist. A seated twist is a couple of options. Lift your spine, take your right hand to your left thigh, take your right hand, set it to the side of your chair. A long spine as you try to look over your shoulder. You're gonna take your ribs though, you're thinking this belly button, let's think about belly button, rotating. All right, again, I cannot emphasize enough to use your arms to help your spine get longer and longer as you twist. And then, of course, we've got the other side. We go slow. We pay attention to the body. We breathe. And then return. Now, another version that's challenging, big time challenging, is if you cross your legs, one over the other, then the leg that's crossed, take the opposite arm, grab the outside of that knee, use this support and this support to look over that shoulder. So you're gonna feel a little bit more, not just along your spinal muscles, but in those hips as well, when you cross your legs. And then of course, you're gonna switch sides to do the other side. So that's your seated twist. All right, your cat cow, similar to your um, flexion and extension, but now we're gonna do a little bit more support and a little bit more intention on it. So we're gonna tuck our chin, round our back, hands are on thighs, fingers are pointed together. We're literally gonna focus on pulling the shoulder blades, back. sorry, let me rephrase that. My tongue got tied. We're gonna literally be pulling our shoulder blades apart. You might feel your shoulders in the front coming toward each other a little bit, that's okay. And then now that is your cat. Your cow is the opposite. We're gonna pull our shoulder blades together. Our hands are still on our thighs, but we see our fingers have to turn out to make this happen. Shoulder blades together, chest lifts, and chin comes up. It's your cow. So cat, round your back, and cow. A little bit more intention to that spinal flexion and extension with your cow. Ankle rotations. All right, I'll come to the side so you can see my ankles better. Easy peasy, ankle circles. Just another word for ankle circles, right? Circle those ankles, circle them, circle them. Slow, quick, <laughs> in both directions. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, ankle mobility is so important for walking, for fall prevention, for feeling good. Such a good thing. So sounds like we're gonna stay with the ankles. 
we're actually gonna include the opposite knee. So ankle comes to the knee, and then we're gonna just press on that thigh. Come to the side you see, ankle to knee, press on that thigh. This is going to open up your hip. It's gonna work the hip flexor areas, the psoas. There's a lot of, um, a lot of hip muscles in there that do get tight. So this one is especially good for that. And again, make sure that you're supported with your arms. You don't push through pain. So that's your ankle knee stretch. All right, team. Seated Warrior. I love this one. Anything with the name Warrior in it is going to be on the top of my list as ones I think are awesome. So a Seated Warrior is like this. I just moved my chair because I don't hit my medicine ball. We're going to create like a Warrior 2 pose with the legs. So Warrior 2 is a yoga pose. So as I push it back a little bit more so you can see my feet, one foot is going to step to the side and it's going to face that side. Knee is over ankle. The other foot is going to push behind, or the other side. You're gonna to try to push your heel into the ground. All right, so this ankle is at like a 45 degree. You hold the chair to keep yourself in this posture and keep your shoulders right over your hips. This is a warrior two in yoga or a seated warrior for the sake of a seated stretch. Now we're still sitting on the chair if you've got the strength to keep yourself upright, you can have your arms reach to the side as well. This is a very traditional warrior two pose. Arms are long and reaching from fingertip to fingertip trying to get both walls. Shoulders are lifted right over the hips. Back heel is pressed into the ground. Your warrior two from a seated position. Oh, I love that, love it. All right, team, we are moving along nicely. Your trapezius release. A better word would have been, or maybe a better title would be neck stretch. But I'd like you to know what muscle is being released. So we're gonna focus directly on the traps, which, is the, which are the muscles that lead up to the neck or that are in the neck. So we're gonna take our nose and gently bring them to an armpit. It's the easiest cueing, I think. When I tell people like, you know, bring your chin, dip your chin down, that's one thing. But if I say, take your nose to your armpit, you know exactly where to go. Now, nose to armpit, not armpit to nose. So we let the shoulders relax. We dip down the nose. And then we find the other side. Now, it does add a little bit more relaxation or mm, when we lift the chin and draw a rainbow with our nose from armpit to armpit, that feels good for those traps. Lift, circle, and bring it to the other. Now, you can add a little tug with the hand, but I would caution you. The biggest deal of this is the word little. No strain, don't pull your head down so your nose gets to your armpit. So when in doubt, don't use the hand. But if you do use the hand to help and assist, just be very gentle. Okie doke. Team, we're moving. All right, shoulder roll. Oh, very traditional, very awesome, but a big, big, important um, stretch. Another thing that's important about the shoulder roll is let's only go backwards. The reason is we want to always do things that focus on assisting in great postural correction. This lifting of the chest, rolling back, squeezing the shoulder blades in the back is going to make a big impact on posture. Yeah. Chest opener, another one that's great for posture. We're simply going to open the chest. Palms are up, elbows are down, pull the shoulder blades together, Shoulders themselves are nice and low. Ears are nice and high. Chin is slightly lifted to where it feels comfortable. Big breath as you fill up those lungs and then release. So good, so good. All right, let's keep moving. So chest opener, rear delt and scapular stretch. The delt is your shoulder muscle. So rear delt would be the back of your shoulder muscle. And the scapular area is around your shoulder blade. So this stretch, we're going to lace our fingers in front, 
tuck our chin, and just like that cat pose, we're gonna focus on pulling the shoulder blades apart. Our back is rounded. See if you can pull more, create more space between your shoulder blades and enjoy. So good, so good for the, all those muscles. All right, arm swings came back. Now they're also a cardio exercise and they are a dynamic stretch. So this is so good to add to your stretch sequence as well. All right team, that's a lot of stretches. I hope you enjoy them in your workout. Just remember, if you're going to hold a stretch, do it at the end of your workout. If you're gonna do movement through your stretch, it's okay to do it at the beginning of your workout. Have fun, enjoy them. I'll talk to you soon.